so it has three by three matrix very first one kd cos theta second term kq sin theta k naught that is the first row second row kd cos theta minus 2 pi by 3 kq sin theta minus 2 pi by 3 k naught it is the second row third row kd cos theta plus 2 pi by 3 kq sin theta plus 2 pi by 3 and k naught you can understand this matrix very easily phase a theta term cos theta term in the d axis this is in the d axis this is in the q axis so this is zero dq dq so generally this transformation is dq transformation so this is zero sequence term k naught there won't be any change in the zero sequence why because in the zero sequence phase a phase b and phase c all are in phase a b c therefore any so there is no any deviation between all the phases so this is the d axis term so this is phase a phase b and phase c for phase b you know cos theta minus 2 pi by 3 theta minus 2 pi by 3 here phase So this is phase A, you can have phase B and phase C rotating in this direction, minus 120 degrees between phase A and B, plus 120 degrees between phase A and C. This is 2 pi by 3, minus 2 pi by 3. plus 2 pi by 3 so therefore let us go to the previous one here a phase a d axis term cos theta and q axis term sin theta kq value it may be minus value so that we will see later so i am following padiyar book now refer the padiyar and kq sin theta q axis term in phase a isn't it so coming to the phase a b c so this is the phase a this is d axis and this is q axis this the angle between phase a and d axis is theta angle between q x and d axis is 90 degrees our assumption is q axis is leading with the d axis you can also take lagging angle so we will get uh, similar results so phase a is the angle between phase A and D axis is A and D axis is theta, theta degrees. Okay. Phase B and D axis theta minus 2 pi by 3. The last one, 
phase C and D axis theta plus 2 pi by 3. These are the different angles. This you need to understand. So therefore, from the discussion, you can understand this is the phase A, phase B, and phase C terms. Phase B, you have KD cos theta minus 2 pi by 3, KQ sin theta minus 2 pi by 3, KD cos theta plus 2 pi by 3, KQ sin theta plus 2 pi by 3, and K0. This is the CP transformation matrix. Okay. FD, FQ, and F0 are the quantities is a current voltage or flex linkages. Is equal to CP inverse FP FB FC. So F may be F may be current I, voltage V, and flux link is psi. Any term. So similarly, if, if you want to express FA, FB, FC, so CP, FD, F2, F0. Again, it may be current, voltage, and flux linkages. These two you need to remember. You need to remember. Now, you need to remember CP and CP inverse also. So, let us go for CP inverse. So, let us have this is the CP inverse equal to CP inverse is first row let us have K1 cos theta K1 cos theta no, minus 2 pi by 3 K1 cos theta plus 2 pi by 3. This is the first row. So second row K2 sin theta. K2 sin theta minus 2 pi by 3. K2 sin theta plus 2 pi by 3 and last one k3 k3 and k3 this is the cp inverse cp inverse where k1 equal to Two by three KD. KD is in the denominator. And K two equal to two by three KQ. K KQ in the denominator. And K three equal to one by three K naught. So this is the C P inverse. C P inverse.
So let us remember all these parameters. Okay. So that here the very important point is the power invariance of the transformation. The power should not change when you transform the quantities, phase quantities into dq quantities. So therefore, power invariance is most important. The power invariant. For example, uh, let us have the fault analysis in which sequence components one of the important tool to analyze the unsymmetrical faults. Okay, so sequence components are used to transform the unbalanced set of currents and voltages to the balanced set of sequence components positive, negative and zero sequence components in which that transformation is power invariant. Similarly here DQ transformation is also power invariant. So provided if it is orthogonal, CP is orthogonal. If CP is orthogonal, then only it is said to be power invariant. So that means CP inverse equal to CP transpose. CP inverse is equal to CP transpose then only you will get the power invariance. Then you can say this is the power invariant transformation. And the choice of constants might be KD choice of constants can be KD equal to plus or minus square root of 2 by 3 kq equal to plus or minus square root of 2 by 3 and k naught equal to plus or minus 1 by so 1 by 3 1 by 3 these are the choice of constants for, for power invariance So we will take only positive values, we will take only positive values to prove it power invariant transformation. So let us have the CP value for power invariant transformation. Just with small modifications we will get the CP. It can be in the first row. So it, it can be arranged like that 1 by root 3. The first row root 2 cos theta, root 2 sin theta, and 1. Second one root 2 cos theta minus. 2 pi by 3 root 2 second term anyone you can tell root 2 sine what is the value theta minus 2 pi by 3 and 1 third one third row root 2 cos 
theta plus 2 pi by 3 root 2 sin theta plus 2 pi by 3 and 1. So this is the this is the CP. CP. Now you can have CP transpose. You can find the CP transpose and you can also find the CP inverse. Both will be same. Both will be same for power invariant transformation. Therefore, KD equal to KQ equal to root 2 by 3 and K naught equal to 1 by root 3 or you can also write one uh, square root of 1 by 3. So these choice of constants in original transformation as well as revised Fox transformation can be in the original Fox transformation the other one is the revised revised or modified Fox transformation In the original transformation, KD equal to plus 1, KQ equal to minus 1. And in revised transformation, KD equal to square root of 2 by 3, KQ is also same, 2 by 3, square root of 2 by 3. Revised transformation okay so you need to understand this concept power invariant transformation Trans what is the what is meant by transformation transformation is nothing but you are changing the set of values in the three phase to DC transformation, equivalent DC values, that is DQO transformation. So in balanced system, in balanced system, zero sequence components are equal to zero and hence you can have D and Q values. D and Q values. Uh, this is the power invariance of Hall's transformation. If you have any questions, please raise your questions. Okay, if you don't have questions, we'll discuss further equations. Okay, let us go to the next point. Stator voltage equations. state or voltage equations in DQ components D 
DQ components. So ED is the D axis voltage that is equal to P into psi D minus psi Q P theta minus R A I A. So this is the the first term is the transformer voltage, second term is the speed voltage, third term is the resistance drop. Similarly, you have E Q P psi Q plus psi D into P theta. P is the D by DT minus R A I Q. R A I Q. This is the transformer voltage, speed voltage, and drop. And E naught equal to P psi naught, anyhow psi naught is 0, minus R A I naught. I naught is also 0. So therefore it may be equal to 0. So no need to consider E naught term. Okay. Where P theta is equal to P theta is equal to D by DT of theta that is equal to omega R speed of the rotor. speed of the rotor and where psi q p theta and psi d p theta are speed voltage due to flex change in space due to flux change in space have you followed this and p psi d and p psi q so that is d by dt to psi d d by dt psi q are transformer voltages so what is the voltage in transformer n d phi by dt so due to flex linkages in the sinusoidal flex so that is flex change in time. So this is due to flex change in time. That is the major difference between transformer voltage and speed voltage. Okay. So yesterday also we have discussed one important point that is during steady state During steady state conditions, steady state conditions, speed voltages are speed voltages are. Predominant speed voltage are predominant. 
that is psi q d theta by dt psi d d theta by dt are predominant. during steady state conditions. Suppose in control systems we have studied this transient response of the system in which you have when you give the step input the oscillations are there and it will come to steady state after some time that is settling time. Settling time it will come to steady state. This is the peak core shoot, MP. So this is nothing but the transient response or it is also known as time response. From here, draw the step input like this you have oscillations and come to steady state at some time this is called settling time ts after settling time the machine comes to steady state so this is time this is delta power angle or omega omega r, speed of the rotor. It comes to steady state. This is steady state. This is transient state. At steady state, at steady state, psi d d theta by dt and the psi q d theta by dt are the speed voltages these two are dominant at steady state during transient state for simple understanding i have taken this model this is the response for step input for sinusoidal input may be different But the nature is same, nature of the disturbance and its oscillations are similar. During transient conditions as well as disturbance, disturbed conditions, P psi d is equal to d psi d by dt and P psi q that is d psi q by dt are the predominant these two are predominant in transient conditions this is predominant in steady state conditions this you can understand So while going to the next chapters and we'll analyze the system so that you can understand very well with equations. Now let me explain the relation between electrical power and torque. Electrical power and torque. So what is the relation between electrical power and torque? So in general C is equal to V into I in electrical terms, isn't it? And T into omega in mechanical terms. So in the electrical terms, V is the voltage, I is the 
current. So you can have cos theta is equal to 1 for unity power factor. Let us have that. And coming to the mechanical power, this is the torque. This is the speed. This is the speed. Now, therefore, electrical torque and power both are related directly, right? Now, instantaneous power, let us have instantaneous power that is Pt is instantaneous power so that is equal to Ea and Ia product of the voltage and current in phase A for instance uh, for instantaneous power you can get the product of voltage and currents in all phases Eb and Ib in the phase B and EC and IC in phase C. Phase C. Now you need to express in DQ components. If we express in DQ components, Pt equal to in DQ components, Pt equal to 3 by 2. Yeah, any question? 3 by 2. ED and ID, direct axis components, plus quadrature axis components, EQ and IQ, plus 2 E0 and I0. E0 and I0. Under balanced conditions, E0 I0 equal to 0 for balanced condition. So therefore, Pt equal to 3 by 2 ED ID the direct axis components, EQ, IQ, quadrature axis components. ED, ID and EQ, IQ. Okay. What is ED? Let us recall the equation. So let us have, this is the equation number 1. And equation number 2 is ED. ED equal to P psi D minus psi Q into P theta minus RA, RA ID. This is equation number 2. Let us have equation number 2. So, EQ equal to P psi Q plus psi D P theta minus R A I Q. This is equation number 3. Now what you will do? Let us substitute equations 2 and 3 in 
equation number one. Equation number one. So by substituting those terms, Pt equal to 3 by 2 id p id let us substitute those expressions iq p iq plus 2 anyhow i naught term can be neglected so you remove that i naught term So if you want to have, you can also show that 2 i naught p psi naught. This is the first term. Second term, psi d i q minus psi q id to omega r. This is the second term. Third term minus id square plus iq square plus 2 i naught square into r a. So this is the third term. This is the third term. So this is the rate of change of armature magnetic energy. Armature magnetic energy. This part. So this is the power transfer transformed or power transferred across the power transferred across the air gap. So this is the armature resistance. Resistance loss. Armature resistance loss. Now, the second term power transferred across the air gap. Across the air gap. is useful for transforming the energy. So therefore, torque can be obtained by dividing that power with mechanical speed. So therefore, the next term, torque expression, torque expression, so T equal to power transferred through air gap over mechanical speed. Mechanical speed. Okay. 
that is equal to three by two. So recall that power expression. This term. So this is the term. We need to have this. So therefore, use use the term psi d psi d i q minus psi q i d psi q i d into omega r. Omega r divided by divided by what is the mechanical speed? Omega mech mechanical. So omega r is the electrical term and omega mech is the mechanical term. So you know very well that the relation between the electrical and mechanical quantities theta e equal to pair of poles. Into theta m. So that similarly you can have omega is equal to p by two into omega omega mech. So therefore omega r equal to p by two omega mech. This is the relation. So therefore p means here field poles. So therefore, in Kundur, you will use P suffix F. Therefore, T equal to three by two psi d psi d i q minus psi q i d psi q i d into into P F by two. Here omega r, omega r equal to P F by two into omega mc, isn't it? So therefore, previous expression is this one. Isn't it? So use that expression. T E equal to three by two psi d i q minus psi q i d into what is the expression? Omega r is nothing but P F by two into omega m divided by omega m. So these two will cancel each other, and hence you'll get this expression finally. You can use PF or PE also. Doesn't doesn't matter. Okay. So this is the expression for electrical torque in terms of flux linkages. Okay. Now let me explain the physical significance of DQ transformation or DQ DQO transformation. Transformation, physical significance. So, in the physical significance, you have stator, 
of coils A, B, and C. Theta, theta minus 2 pi by 3, theta plus 2 pi by 3. This is the relation between all the three phases. Okay. And the rotor, rotor has dx and qx. Rotor, we have d and q axis. So this is, uh, let us have the angle between d axis and phase a is theta and uh, 90 plus theta. So therefore, let us have this coil, stator coil, or uh, stator phase, phase windings A, B, C, A, B, C, and uh, rotor so this is the uh, axis A this is the D axis in the D axis we have field winding EFD is the field winding voltage and IFD is the current through the field winding and one damper winding the current flowing through the damper winding is IKD. And Q axis, you have Q axis. And damper winding, the current is IKQ. Uh, this is the stator and the rotor of so this is the stator and the rotor of synchronous machine. You have currents through the three phases of stator. That is I, I B, and I C are the stator currents stator currents now due to transformation what you'll do these stator currents ia ib and ic are transformed into id iq and i naught anyhow i naught will be zero therefore id and iq are the transformed currents transformed currents therefore instead of instead of currents to the stator coils ia ib and ic now, in the second case, you'll use the D axis and Q axis currents. So, the currents are flowing in D axis and Q axis with ID and IQ. D axis and Q axis. Now, the stator coils are not drawing any currents, are supplying any currents. There are, instead of IA, IB, and IC in the stator, now we will transform the phase currents as equivalent to DQ currents. Now, now the effect of currents ID and IQ, which are flowing in the D axis and Q axis, will lead to the same effect as IA, IB, and IC are flowing through the stator, stator coils. The stator coils. Therefore, stationary reference frame, so ABC, so ABC is the stationary reference frame. Stationary reference frame.
and whereas dq dq frame is rotating reference frame dq the rotating reference frame now imagine this rotor is rotating in this direction stator is stationary having coils stator coils so this is rotating and stator field is also rotating so a man standing on the rotor will also rotate with the same speed as omega r isn't it this is omega s stator magnetic fields mmf of stator this is mmf of rotor is mmf of rotor a man standing on the rotor will move with the same speed as that of the rotor whereas a man standing on the stator is stationary is stationary isn't it the coils are here in the, on the stator we have phase a a dash and similarly b b dash c c dash three coils are there three coils are also stationary stationary a man standing on the stator is said to be stationary reference frame is always stationary he is looking at the objects on standing on the stator that means he is also stationary understand a man standing on the rotor he is not stationary he is also moving with the same speed as that, as that of the rotor and hence this is called rotating reference frame this is rotating reference frame abc previous reference frame abc frame is stationary reference frame abc is stationary and dq is rotating reference frame now what you what you are doing you are changing the stationary reference frame into rotating reference frame and hence instead of having the currents phase currents ia ib ic you are having dq currents id and iq the effect is same even you are changing the reference frame the net effect is same there is no difference that to the power invariant transformation that is power invariant transformation the power is also not changing isn't it so therefore this transformation is more advantageous than the original reference frame original reference frame okay i'll stop here in the next class we'll discuss about the other points continuation so thank you one and all and you can go to the next class